spider silk, a material strong and stretchy enough to power a superhero. Since ancient times, it's been known that putting cobwebs on bleeding wounds would help staunch the flow of blood and heal the wound. Obviously, our forebearers were on to something, since it's been found that spider silk is surprisingly compatible with human biology. This compatibility leads to an interest in spider silk and influenced scientists to discover more about it. Spider silk, along with its biomedical uses, has incredible tensile strength and toughness, on top of having a low density. What is tensile strength, though? Well, tensile strength is the amount of stretching pressure that can be applied to a material before fracturing. What about toughness? Toughness is a material's ability to absorb energy without permanently deforming. Spider silk is so unique because it is both strong and tough. Usually there's more of a trade-off between the two properties. In general, dragline silk, the type that the spider dangles down on, has the most desirable properties for human use. It has a tensile strength of up to 2.9 gigapascals, making it about as strong as Kevlar and steel. Its toughness is as high as 160 kilojoules per kilogram, far surpassing both Kevlar and steel. These are impressive stats, considering silk is less dense than either steel or Kevlar. Given these properties, spider silk could have uses in textiles, armor, cables, and so much more. The combination of the material's high tensile strength and flexibility can be utilized in fields like biomedical engineering and even the textiles industry. Spider silk can be used to enhance tendon replacements, flak jackets, sutures, airbags, and textiles for parachutes, just to name a few. Spider silk is made from proteins. Structurally, it's like a fractal. The whole is made through continuous repetition. In this case, it's the repetition of proteins, which are made through the repetition of amino acids, glycine and alanine. Alanine is found in the yellow, crystalline, brick-like structures, and the glycine is in the squiggly, string-like structures that connect them. This is because the alanine forms shapes called beta sheets, which stack together into bricks, while glycine forms curly alpha helixes, which connect into strings. These glycine strings bind together the alanine bricks, lending the material stretchiness that allows it to absorb a lot of energy without snapping. The alanine bricks allow a high stress to be applied to the silk without it being overstretched to the point of deformation. Since spider silk would be so useful in so many applications, why don't we just farm spiders? Unfortunately, individual spiders produce silk too slowly to be commercially viable. Doesn't that look inhumane? Er, in spider mane? Additionally, spiders are very territorial and tend to eat each other when kept together. Since it would be inefficient to store all the spiders separately, many researchers and manufacturers look towards other means of producing the silk artificially. The challenges of producing artificial spider silk, while achievable, are not insignificant. Researchers from the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences have stated that two prerequisites need to be fulfilled in order to spin biomimetic spider silk. First, the proteins used to construct the silk must be highly soluble and respond to specific levels of acidity. Second, the spinning system must mimic the conditions of the spider silk gland. Unfortunately, achieving both of these conditions is quite difficult in labs. Replicating the spider silk proteins, the first prerequisite, has been achieved with some success using laboratory methods. However, some researchers have used genetic engineering to allow silk harvesting from organisms that are more amenable to mass production. These genetically altered organisms include goats that have been modified in such a way that their milk produces the proteins required to create the silk. These goats are raised on farms and milked for these proteins to be used in labs to better mimic the silk produced by spiders. The second prerequisite for creating artificial spider silk, mimicking the conditions of the silk ducts and spiders, is an arduous task for researchers, especially given the large pH gradient within the silk duct. Tests have shown that the silk proteins are initially stored at an approximate pH of 7.6, while the enzymes near the end of the duct acidify the silk to a pH of 5.7 by converting carbon dioxide and water into bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. One recent study has gone beyond the first prerequisite in order to tackle the intricacies of replicating silk gland processing. Swedish team Anna Rising and Jan Johansson have invented a method to produce a biomimetic spider silk by focusing on the processing aspect. Because they replicate the correct building blocks and a similar process, their artificial spider silk has come closest to mimicking the properties of real spider silk. 
In order to treat the spun silk in a pH-controlled bath, similar to how real spider silk is produced in a water-filled sack, the team had to carefully build proteins from spider DNA that would hold up well under the same conditions. They produced a hybrid protein using genes from a South African fisher spider and an Asian orb spider that is both highly soluble in water and responds to changes in pH. After being spun from these hybrid proteins, the silk was extruded into aqueous baths of various pHs. Before being submerged into the bath, the proteins in the silk exhibited primarily alpha helix structure. The team hypothesizes that the slightly acidic bath denatures the proteins in a very specific way via a lock and key mechanism within the structures of the proteins. The proteins transform from having a primarily alpha helix structure to the desired mix of alpha helix and beta sheet structures as shown previously. When subjected to stress strain tests, the final silk was found to have a similar mechanical behavior to natural spider silk, but unfortunately lower performance. The team hypothesizes this could be improved by matching the diameter of the artificial spider silk more closely to the more tightly wound natural spider silk. Overall, this research is a huge step in creating viable commercial spider silk. Spider silk is such a complex material to replicate because its valuable mechanical properties such as tensile strength and elasticity are a direct result of not only the chemical structure of tangled glycine and alanine, but the intensely precise processing involving pH reduction to produce the overall desired materials. This is the first biomimetic spider silk hardy enough to conceivably mass produce. This shows that it's not just about having the right building blocks, you also have to put them together in the right way. The Swedish team achieved the trifecta and has pushed artificial spider silk on its way to being actively used in industry. Unfortunately, we're still a ways away from being able to power superheroes with it. How did the pig tracks get on the ceiling? Spider pig, spider pig, does whatever a spider pig does. Can he swing from a web? No, we can't. He's a pig. Look out, he is a spider pig.